Hi, everybody. It's Thursday. It's the 26th day of September, and just as was expected, predicted, and hoped for, a beautiful day in the neighborhood, and oh, let me find it. I like showing them off when they're short and sweet. The fewer the words, the better the forecast, and this was pretty short and oh so sweet. We do have a rather weak cold front that's going to give us a chance of showers and thunderstorms next week. Not a concern now. Don't expect it to be much of a concern then, as far as the end of your week is concerned, which is just about over, and your weekend, beautiful, clear sailing ahead. Temperatures right around 80, a little patchy fog in the mornings. Otherwise, a lot of sunshine and a lot of wonderful temperatures, and it's just going to be a nice run of some beautiful weather. And as far as next week is concerned, like I said, we might see a few clouds on a few occasions, but for the most part, a very slight chance of some showers and thunderstorms that may not amount to much at all. As far as the forecast period between now and this time next week, I would definitely call it a keeper. More details, of course, in a few moments when we elaborate on your Licking Valley RECC forecast. Well, I'm still working on the report with Chuck Lewis. Won't be airing it tonight. It's going to be a good one. Uh, just some amazing details he has to share with us. And still working on, it's been days, I know, but everything else kind of going on here at the newsroom. Coverage of the McGough County Board of Education. We'll have that tomorrow. Also, I am set to go to a ribbon cutting ceremony for one of our sponsors tomorrow. We'll have that on the program as well. We do have a lot of updates for you in regards to last night's show and some other new reports. And we'll begin right now with coverage from Johnson County, where three separate press releases from the Johnson County Sheriff's Department, that of Dwayne Price, details a vehicle that flipped and landed on its driver. A serious case of animal neglect, a picture that I'll warn you, it's a little hard to look at. And also a DUI-related accident, all three reports and cases happening in the Johnson County area. In the first release, the sheriff outlines that on yesterday, his office received a call of an accident on Route 1428 by the Adams Construction Company. And this is what Deputy Terry Tussey found when he arrived on the scene. An 04 Toyota RAV4 over a hill lodged in some bushes, and then he saw a male suspect or subject sitting on the ground next to the vehicle. The deputy soon thereafter identified him as Ricky Mullins, 40, 54 rather, of Jenkins, Kentucky, and as he approached him, he says Mullins exhibited very slurred speech, and the deputy also noticed a plastic gallon jug of vodka that was nearly empty lying on the ground beside the vehicle. Mullins admitted to the deputy that he had been drinking earlier and Mullins was thereafter transported by Paintsville EMS to the Palm Beach Hall to be medically cleared and then after lodged in the Big Sandy Regional Detention Center on charges of DUI. On the day prior, this Wednesday, the Johnson County Sheriff's Department says they got a complaint of possible animal neglect at a home belonging to J.D. Messer on Silk Stocking Road in the community of Thialka of River. And upon Deputy David Pridemore's arrival, he found two dogs lying on the front porch of the home. And upon further inspection, revealed that the front door of the residence was secured with a padlock. Two more dogs were seen inside the residence, and it appeared that all four dogs were in very poor health and malnourished. The two dogs located on the front porch were immediately seized by the animal control officer. Arrangements were then made to seize the remaining dogs inside the home. And the case is currently under investigation by Deputy David Pridemore, with charges still pending. The Sheriff's Office wants to encourage everyone to report suspected abuse and or, neg and or neglect of animals, and you can call and remain anonymous if you would like the Sheriff's Department at 789-3411. In the past several months, this is the second or third case that they have reported of animal neglect or abuse to our newsroom. And this accident goes back to this past weekend, a serious accident. We're attempting to get an update on the driver who was injured very seriously. The Sheriff's Department responding to a call on 3224 in the community of River. This is a 97 white Ford Explorer that was being operated by Kenneth Lash, 29, of River. He ran off the roadway and struck a ditch line and was thrown from the vehicle, the driver's side window of the SUV, which flipped. The vehicle then came to a final rest on its side, but in the midst of all that, it rolled on top of Lash. Now, he was taken by Paintsville EMS to the Paul B. Hall Regional Medical Center for treatment of his injuries that he sustained. He was later taken from there to the Cabell Huntington Hospital for further treatment of possible life-threatening injuries. The W.R. Castle Fire Department also assisted at the scene. The investigation still remains open. We've got more headlines, obviously, and announcements and much more to follow right after these words. 
Game time means wing time at least, and that means it's time for you to try our new buffalo wings. I can't tell you our secret, but I can tell you they're marinated and then rolled in our famous, albeit a little spicy, crispy chicken batter and served up with any of our seven delectable sauces. So get your hands on a meal or a box today at your Sayersville Lee's Hamus Recipe, where no one does chicken like we do chicken. Let's do this. Can't believe my daughter wants to marry a Hatfield. And I can't believe my son fell in love with a McCoy. Well, I got one thing to say. They're going to have the wireless plan with the best service. And I say they're going to have the wireless plan with the biggest savings. Daddy! Hush up, Mary Beth. Pa! Stay out of this, Jonah. We're done talking. You got that right. Better service. Bigger savings. Daddy, we've both got Appalachian Wireless. Better service. Bigger savings. That's today's Appalachian Wireless. I'm Don McFarlane. I am an attorney in Sayersville, Kentucky, and I'm here to serve you and meet your legal needs. If you have been injured on the job, if you are interested in receiving your disability or your SSI benefits, if someone's negligence has caused you trouble, basically, if you have been in a car wreck and you've suffered pain, then pick up the phone and call Donald Wayne, 349-9000. They just keep coming new and incredible flavors of your favorite ice cream treat. And now they've done it again with the Choco Covered Cheesecake Blizzard at your Sagersville Dairy Queen. Creamy cheesecake pieces, rich cocoa fudge, decadent choco chunks, and creamy vanilla soft serve make your new Blizzard of the Month. And if that's not enough, just for September, buy one Blizzard, get another for just 99 cents. That's right, 99 cents at your Sagersville DQ. Bailey's Furniture has done it again. This beautiful queen-size sleigh bed, media center, and matching chest are only $2.95 each, whether you buy one or buy them all. And you can save $400 and get a second nightstand with this gorgeous Von Bassett group. Lazy Boy Rocker Recliner start at $2.95 and Catnapper Lift Chairs start at $6.89 at Bailey's Furniture and GE Appliance Center. Faster, friendlier, family-owned Parkway Pharmacy open 8.30 to 6.30 Monday through Friday in the new McGoffin Medical Plaza under the care of local pharmacist Jesse Rudd. To make Parkway Pharmacy your pharmacy, come by or give us a call at 349-4400. Of course, we're still awaiting the latest update in regards to the discovery of the body on Route 80 in Knott County yesterday, which the family had unofficially confirmed as that of 34-year-old Christina Barnett, who'd been missing for exactly a week yesterday. We'll have an update on the situation. Also, confirmation by authorities that indeed it was her body, but some other details before I leave you. Well, let's turn to some news from around the region. First off, you know, it has grown quickly, almost exponentially. And if you're, you're an avid equestrian, or a novice equestrian for that matter, you're probably aware, or need to be reminded at least, that the premium horse riding event of this region and for a great swath of Kentucky and elsewhere is next week. You can go to a very popular website around this time of year, notcountyadventure.com, to learn more about the Knott County Fall Trail Ride. It all officially starts a week from today. The website gives you a little more information about the Knott County Fall Trail Ride. Indeed, one of the largest trail riding events in Kentucky and the southeast, and it's set for October 3rd through the 6th, and if you check your calendar, that's next Thursday through Sunday. When thousands of riders and horses will all descend upon the 43,000-acre Mine Made Paradise Adventure Park located just outside of Hyman, more than 100 miles of trails to the park. Plenty of group rides are scheduled throughout the event, and in addition to all the riding and camping, there's going to be equine vendors, great food, live music on Thursday, Friday, Saturday evenings, musical acts including Logan Hall, Halfway to Hazard, Keith Anderson, you've heard of them, admission for the entire event, 20 bucks per person, and kids under 12 get in for free. While the event doesn't kick off officially until Thursday, well, a lot of folks are probably already there, and certainly will be over the course of the weekend setting up, and certainly by this Sunday they expect to have a large crowd. The Knott County Trail Rides become one of the premier riding events for the entire region and continues to grow each year. And once again, to learn more about the event or see a lot of photographs that uh, were recognized from last year's ride, go to knotcountyadventure.com. A Kentucky couple, the husband of which dubbed the Bad Hair Bandit, were sentenced today. They were sentenced to 10 and 20 years, respectively, for several bank robberies they were responsible for conducting throughout parts of Kentucky over the course of several months. In 2011, U.S. District Judge Gregory Van Tatenhoff sentenced 32-year-old Jason Fox 
also known as the Bad Hair Bandit, to 20 years on seven separate counts of bank robbery and armed bank robbery. Meanwhile, his wife, 28-year-old Tasha, was sentenced to 10 years for aiding and abetting in several of those robberies. Both of them will also have to serve five years of supervised release once their prison terms are completed, and they'll have to serve at least 85% of those per federal guidelines. Judge Van Tatenhoff also ordered Jason Fox to pay more than $80,000 in restitution, while his wife is jointly responsible for about $58,000 of that same amount. In a guilty plea earlier this year, Jason Fox admitted that from June through October of 2011, he robbed a total of seven banks in Kentucky, in Barberville, Corbin, Pine Knot, and Williamsburg, and several areas in Tennessee as well. In five of those robberies, he was in possession of a semi-automatic handgun as well. He sometimes pointed that gun and threatened Taylor tellers at banks with that weapon. In four of the robberies, his wife Tasha drove the getaway car for her husband. She'd already pleaded guilty earlier this year. Local headlines will resume in a few moments. Right now, some announcements. They're always brought to you on behalf of McGoffin Farm Bureau and your local agent, Doug Green. And they're on tonight's community calendar, beginning with the North McGoffin Volunteer Fire Department. Josh Jenkins called in and put a special request for a beautiful day of weather this Saturday for this and other events in the area. And he got it. Well, if he did, he didn't call me. But nevertheless, it's going to be simply gorgeous. This is the North McGoffin Volunteer Fire Department's biggest fundraiser of the year. And our local volunteer fire departments just could not function without events like these. And it's not only that you'll have a good time, but it's through that support that you need to attend. The 2013 annual hog roast and soup bean dinner and auction, it's this Saturday at the shelter at the top of the improvement or Rock House Hill on Route 364 in front of the Rock House Liberty Baptist Church. They'll start serving dinner at noon and serve it throughout the evening. And auction's going to start at 2 with items like home furniture, small kitchen appliances, power tools and hand tools, tabletop refrigerators, air compressors, longer burger baskets, ladies, gas grills, generators, patio fire pits, John Deere collectibles. The list goes on and on and on. Live entertainment will start at noon as well, and the dinners are just 6 bucks a piece. And kids 12 and under eat free. Dinners will be roasted ham and soup bean dinners, beverages also, also having hot dogs, corn dogs, loaded fries, and much, much more. All proceeds going to the North McGoffin Volunteer Fire Department. So come out and bring the family in a chair for a fun day under some beautiful sunshine above and wonderful temperatures and support your local and area fire department. The Community Free Will Baptist Church has a yard sale. It's a one-day big event yard sale next Tuesday, which is the 1st of October, by the way, starting at 8 a.m. A lot of good items will come early for a lot of good deals. Now they are about, what, two miles east of Sagersville on Route 40? A benefit has been set for Jimmy Porter. It's going to be October the 13th, a couple of weeks away. However, we're letting you know now that the family of Jimmy Porter is graciously accepting donations and support as he is now in his second battle with prostate cancer since May of last year, and he's recently had to take a layoff from work because of the severeness of his illness. If you'd like to help support he and his family, they're having an auction. They're going to have baked goods of all kinds, and donations are graciously being accepted until the 11th of October. Every donation will be greatly appreciated. For more information or how to help support them, call Brittany or Jeremy. The numbers, respectively, 367-2443 and 367-2443. 3734. It's time for flu shots. I know it's the last thing you want to think about right now, but the sooner the better. And you can get them at the McGoffin County Health Department Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, 8 till 3, Tuesdays, 8 till 5, Fridays, 8 till noon. Call if you have any questions. They accept private pay, Medicaid, Medicare Part B, and Kentucky Humana. And if you have Kentucky Employees Health Plan through Humana, your copay will be waived September the 1st through November the 30th. Can't beat that. Call 349-6212 if you've got any questions whatsoever. And please call me anytime you've got an announcement like this. We have been running calendar announcements since we've been running this program. They've been free ever since we started nearly 15 years ago. By the way, I've got a big anniversary coming up in about a month. I don't know if we're even going to take time to recognize it. The way the last couple of weeks have been, probably not. But nevertheless, we'll have to make note of it to one way or the other. But my point, going back to my original point, coming around the horn here calendar announcements always have been always will be free and that goes for birthdays and anniversaries and the like send it to us and we'll let everyone know what you've got going on
As for local and area funeral service announcements, they're brought to you on behalf of our friends at the McGoffin County Funeral Home. And they begin tonight with services to be held in honor of 87-year-old Mitchell Rife of Ashland, who passed away on the 24th. He survived by son, Hobart, and visitation will be here in Sagersville after 5 o'clock tomorrow and any time prior to services. They're set for Saturday at 1, with both visitation and services from the McGoffin County Funeral Home and burial to follow at the Willie Wiley Wireman, excuse me, Cemetery at Gunlock. And services for 48-year-old Bambi Davis, resident of Short Fork Road in Sagersville, were held earlier today, as were those for her daughter, 25-year-old Tisha Henry of Allen, Kentucky. Services for both mother and daughter were held earlier today at the Sagersville Funeral Home. Whether you're coming home or just want to feel at home for one night or a few, the Mortimer Lofts in Sagersville are that perfect experience you're looking for. With two newly restored and uniquely appointed lofts overlooking downtown from one of its historic structures filled with its history throughout. Each can accommodate up to four guests, six with the option of a connecting bedroom, or the entire floor can sleep ten comfortably. And with all the amenities like king beds, HDTVs, free Wi-Fi, private baths, and kitchenettes to make your stay a memorable one. To see more and reserve your next visit, go to Sagersville, Kentucky on VRBO.com or email the Mortimers at 2 reach Sue at Yahoo. Whether you want to be feared or favored, funny or frightful this Halloween, Fraser's Prater Drug Seasonal Shop has everything you'll ever need for the mood or effect you desire. And while we never know just how colorful our natural landscape will be at autumn, we are for always certain the season is vibrant inside the region's largest selection of fall and home decor. So come and see what surprises and delights await you at Fraser's Prater Drug Seasonal Shop in downtown Sagersville. Sagersville Nursing and Rehabilitation Center is proud to announce the newest members of our family, Administrator Elaine Jones and our full-time chaplain Mark Campbell and volunteer Richard Green new faces with the same sincere desire as these to assist you and your family with short-term rehabilitation solutions or long-term nursing care needs close to home and those that you love Sagersville nursing and rehabilitation at the end of every race mark martin hangs up his driving gloves he hangs up his fire suit and he hangs up his helmet which is why he picks up his phone and opens the ER Extra app. The app shows ER Extra wait times, locations, and more. It's the one safeguard Mark Martin is never without. ER Extra at Paul B. Hall Regional Medical Center. Extra fast, extra easy, extra great. Stop by to see how, with a guaranteed trade-in, you can drive off in this gorgeous 2011 Hyundai Sonata for $17,950 or $2.99 a month or how to drive off with a little soul for $12,950 or $2.35 a month, or how to drive off with a lot of style in this Dodge Ram Daytona at $15,950, all at Premier Motors in Paintsville. 170s, 500, 570, 800, 900, two seats, four seats, Razors, Rangers, and XPs in the hottest colors with the coolest accessories with the best financing available and rebates up to a grand at Conley's Kawasaki and Polaris of Paintsville. Hold on to your hats because the doors are reopening at Red's Boot Barn in Sagersville this Tuesday with the same outstanding deals and amazing selection of country, western, and workwear at their new location on Route 114. So come on in and check us out at Red's. A very dramatic and certainly ever so tragic turn of events yesterday. Just in case you missed last night's program, just as I was conducting an interview with Donna Hale of Johnson County via the telephone, and we were making arrangements, mind you, to do a follow-up with more details on tomorrow. Just about the same time that we were doing that interview, a family member and a close neighbor and friend discovered the body of Christina Barnett off Route 80 in Knott County. She's been missing for a week. Last seen with an individual, a man she had been seeing for a few months who she first made acquaintances of via the internet, a man from the same county as she, from what I understand unofficially. However, while the investigation still continues into who is responsible for her death, 
authorities today did indeed confirm the family's worst, worst feelings and thoughts that indeed the body discovered yesterday was that of the 34-year-old Johnson County woman. The coroner in Knott County has officially confirmed just exactly that, that the body found there yesterday off of Route 80 is indeed 34-year-old Christina Barnett of Johnson County, known as Chrissy only to the very closest of friends. Something her family actually knew yesterday, moments, moments, or instantly after her body was found. An autopsy has been done. The results are pending. While authorities have now confirmed her identity, they have not released the cause of death as of yet. She had been missing a week ago yesterday. She had left her home, actually her mother's home where she had been staying, taking care of her mother, Donna Hale, after her mother had surgery. She had left with an individual that she had known for months. She had met on the Internet, and they made a trip to London, supposedly. And supposedly it looks as though at the point maybe of return of that trip, they stopped at the BP in Hazard, and it was there that they were seen by the owner's son. After being questioned by authorities, he recognized the vehicle in question, a pickup truck. She was with still in the individual that she had met via the Internet. He witnessed her get out of the pickup truck, get back in wearing the boots that she would be discovered in later. And in no time, as I mentioned to you yesterday, was there any sign of any altercation or anything of that nature, no anger, no fighting or anything of that nature. She got back in the vehicle, and they left the scene, even though the suspect has told police, or the individual, I should stress, we can't say he's a suspect as of yet, has told police that he had left her at that BP station after they had gotten in an argument. Then her body was discovered by a small search party just a few miles from that BP location off Route 80 where she had been left. Her body had been burned, dumped, and covered with garbage and left off a gravel road off of Route 80. We will let you know more as soon as it comes into the newsroom. With that said, a few minutes short this evening. I've got some news to cover, and I've got a whole lot of news for tomorrow from earlier in the week, and so we'll be covering then as we leave you for what undoubtedly is going to be one of those weekends you'd like to just put in a bottle and save for certainly a few months from now. As far as conditions out there tonight, well, they're going to be nice following. I uh, actually hit 80 degrees here at the newsroom today as the sun came out just for a brief bit around the latter afternoon hours. We fell back down to around 78 and holding right around the 6 o'clock hour. We'll get down to around 50 tonight under clear skies. The only real hiccups in the forecast short term is patchy fog developing after 4 a.m. And you can thank your Licking Valley RECC forecast for a beautiful end of the work week for most everyone. Oh, I'd like to see that everyone gets off for the weekend and enjoys this one because it's going to be another nice one. You know, we've gone from the, the wet, rainy season to a rather dry one. Not a whole lot of rain since fall started and a few days there before. There's no complaints either. We've, we've covered a lot of ground in that arena, certainly. Uh, and we're faring quite nicely as far as moisture is concerned and certainly as the weather is concerned as well pushing 80 degrees once again tomorrow the same temperature for tomorrow as today but we'll see more sunshine we'll also see a little a.m fog we'll see clear skies continuing and another nighttime low of 50 degrees tomorrow night you can almost put it on cruise control from hereafter saturday 79 degrees a low 56 sunshine above more clear skies and a first half of a beautiful weekend the second half of which is going to be just a few degrees cooler, but still absolutely stunning. A little bit of patchy fog possibly in the morning, not near as much as Saturday, and maybe none at all. It's going to be kind of borderline. We will see 77 for a daytime high. A mild or evening low, certainly of 60 degrees, and it's going to be clear. You're going to see blue skies, a lot of sunshine, and just what is going to be an outstanding weekend for fall here in Kentucky. And those certainly are ones to enjoy. We will see some clouds moving in late Sunday. This time, 24 hours ago, our National Weather Service forecast also had us looking at a slight chance of some showers and thunderstorms, more so showers late Sunday night. Right now, well, that does not appear to be the case. There has been a slight chance that's been put into Monday's forecast, but it's so, so slight. We've got another front that's coming in here next week uh, that's really not going to do much, and it's barely going to be noticeable, and hence that is about the only shot of showers and thunderstorms we're going to see except for one more round on wednesday 76 it's not even a threat it's just a glimpse 
possibly of showers on Monday, 76. We'll see mostly sunny and 78 again on your Tuesday. That trend will ride on out through the rest of the week. Tuesday into Wednesday, there's another week front that I'm referring to, and that'll bring us only another 20% shot of some showers, thunderstorms. It's doing mostly sunny and gorgeous, and I see no end to this throughout the forecast period, which runs through next Thursday, and even a few days thereafter, I no real change up in sight. It's just simply perfect. Picture perfect, if you ask me. And if you ask me, that's about all I've got for this evening. We'll be catching up on some news tomorrow and some events happening tomorrow. I hope you join us then for the last show of this week. Approaching our 15th year here before you know it, I guess it's something I'll have to give a little thought to around here. If you've got any suggestions, feel free to share them, besides making me feel a little old. With that said, thank you all for being a part of the program. Have a wonderful, beautiful fall evening.